Um, putting, putting the trees in there. Yeah, putting in the trees. Trees in. Can I pick this one the tree? It gives us oxygen. Yeah, lots of it. Lots and lots Whoa, of oxygen. Put it back in there. Keep, keep. The whole Let me see it. I was thinking. tells you the, uh, how to grow things. 
It tells you about pollinators. We have an ethnobotanical portion of this now. I am immensely proud of this thing. And if there were one place for people to go to really get their arms around restoration and native plants and pollinators and the whole ethnobotanical piece, it would be here. So um, if you Google this, you, there's tons of information in here, just a whole lot that gets people started or embellishes the, the knowledge they already have. I gave you the, the really quick version. Let's uh, take one or two questions or comments. Yes, Nathan. One of the things that, that you, you know, I'm all for plant restoration and everything, and we, we definitely promote that. Um, but a lot of times, you know, you go out in the woods, and I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with this, you see a lot of clear cutting and things like that. So we've been, we're taught when we go out and pick that if something's sick, you don't pick from it. You let it, you let it heal, and then you come back. There's a lot of uh, species that are replanted, not with the other species that it grows with, that actually they work together and help with diseases and some of these things, the problems that we're having right now. And I've seen this, and I'm sure many of you have going out there, there's a serious off balance. And, and there, there's, if we're restoring certain areas, it's not really doing any good if someone's gonna come 50 years or 25 years from now and, and cut those areas down. So I went to the Michigan website, and I, I know you're doing it on a, a national level, but um, you guys got to work together. I went to their website, and all, everything about forest management that I seen the day I was on there was all about trees, cutting the trees, and how long you're going to cut the trees. Nothing mentioned about the understory, the plants, or anything like that. And as a person that's out in the woods often, you see it. And um, so then you're like, well, okay, we're doing forest rest restoration, but who are we ultimately doing it for? Because they're going to come here and just cut these down. We were driving here and went by uh, Manistique just east on US 2. I, I couldn't believe how much clear cutting they did there. It's not sustainably picking a tree here and there. It's just, it's all gone. And then, well, we're just going to plant a bunch of trees and it'll all go. You won't notice a difference. But then the trees they're planting are trees that uh, don't grow with other trees that help prevent some of these diseases and some of the problems that we're facing right now with invasive species. Because part of me would argue that some of these old uh, forests are probably more protected in the sense that they don't they have so much root structure underneath that they don't allow some of these invasive species to come in and so I would personally like to see areas designated where they don't cut any trees from them and they just let itself reestablish if anything just for people to learn that if you had that you wouldn't have so many problems that we have all around so I just wanted to add that to what you were saying. Uh, no, just last, last word. Uh, yes, please. I just wanted to say something. Uh, Michigan, a part of our reason our environment has gone through such change too, does some of that have to do with the, our policies on hunting and the deer population? And because like now there are so many deer that it's eating all the underbrush, all the shrubs below the ground that, um, we have laws now where you can only hunt bucks and all that. Those are disappearing because their their big genes of the big rats are out of the gene pool. So now we have a bunch of does running around that we can't hunt that are eating a lot of our um, you know shrubs, all of our low ground just for vegetation. The number of white-tailed deer that we have in many parts of our state is in Wisconsin. Are very deleterious. We have a number of plants that are listed in Wisconsin lilies. There is no logical reason for them to be rare, with the exception that they taste so good. <laughs> <laughs> They're full of vanillin, which is the you know the uh, orchids contain that, but lilies as well. They just are being over browsed. and that's an issue that I don't feed them. I do not feed deer. Um, they're very destructive in the numbers and in the locations that they're at. I
This helps it to keep it from getting root bound so that it will spread out. Do you smell that medicine? Yeah. You guys smell that? That's good.